I've been working as a software engineer for a long time now, which means I've lied to myself a lot. As engineers, we constantly tell ourselves certain things that we know are probably not true, but we delude ourselves and end up believing them anyway. Whether I was working at a startup, at Pinterest, or at Meta, I have very often had expectations of how something will go, and it never turns out to be that simple or that easy. And I know I'm not alone in this. In this video, I want to share the top five lies that software engineers tell themselves. Starting off the list, we have the classic line, it'll take me just five minutes to finish up this coding task. Software engineers are eternally too optimistic when it comes to estimating how long a coding task will take. Usually it takes me five minutes just to get set up and understand the context around the code that I'm modifying. And if you're working in a large code base, there are tons of strings to pull on. Why is this function being called here? Why is this parameter being passed in? A lot of rabbit holes you could go down, which could easily eat up 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and multiple hours even. And once you've written the code, there's still more work to do to put it up for review. For example, adding a good description and a test plan. I talk about this in my video about messy code, but the more time you spend in dressing up your code, the easier it'll be, the more time you'll save when it comes to landing and getting your code approved. And so to think that the whole thing, writing code and actually putting it up for review so you can land it, to think that'll take five minutes is not really realistic. Line number four is the famous line, it's a feature and not a bug. Usually this happens because we're coding something up and it ends up deviating from the design spec a little bit. And that either can come from just there's a lot more work to do it exactly as specified, or maybe the product requirements are not fully fleshed out. And so we kind of tell ourselves or we tell the team even that, hey, this small deviation is actually intended behavior. I personally dealt with this kind of wishful thinking at my time at Facebook. So I was working on a hardware video calling team called Portal, which interacted quite a bit with the Messenger mobile app. And so one of my projects required me to go into the Android Messenger code base and add a notification bar when the person was doing some activity on their portal. And I had implemented it in such a way that if there was an active call going on, that notification bar that I implemented on Messenger was harder to dismiss. It wasn't fully clarified in the requirements, like what should happen in that scenario. And so I kind of just push it out there saying, hey, this is done. Largely because if I'm being honest, I didn't want to do all the hard work of digging into the Messenger Android code base, which I was much less familiar with compared to the portal code base. And so I thought I could get away with it. But then of course the QA team filed a bunch of bugs saying, oh, you know, it's not clear what should happen in this case. And I ended up having to do that hard work anyway of diving into the messenger code base and fixing it properly. It sounds obvious to say, but I've made every mistake in this video multiple times where I constantly set unrealistic expectations for myself. If you want to tell yourself fewer lies, check out my company Tara. Join Tara.com. We have masterclasses and discussions from top engineers around the world so you can learn from their mistakes instead of having to make your own. The next lie we tell ourselves is, I'll remember what this code is doing. We've all been there where we write code, which makes a lot of sense to us at the time, but then we come back to it a few weeks or a few months later, and it looks completely alien to us. We have no idea what it's doing. Another form of this lie is to say, I don't need to write documentation. My code is self-explanatory. We somehow convince ourselves that our code is a masterpiece of clarity, but spoiler alert, it certainly is not very clear to your team. And it also probably won't be that clear for future you a week or a month later. In general, I agree with the idea of not commenting your code excessively because then the comments themselves become a maintenance burden. But for larger files or functions which are more complicated, I think it's always worth having a bit of a description at the top to understand what it was doing. My other recommendation is to add notes in your pull request. So when people do a git blame in the future on that file and they find your code change, they can read the description, the test plan, the context you provided to have a really good sense of the reasoning behind the code and what was the world looking like at the time that the code was committed. Line number two is the myth of multitasking. You tell yourself, oh, I can totally handle three projects at once. When I'm blocked on project A, I'll do project B. And when I'm tired of project B, I'll do project C and I'll balance between all three of them. In high school, I had a tennis coach who used to say, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's way too ambitious to think you can juggle more than three projects at the same time. Here are a few things we forget to consider before we commit to different projects. First, what if someone takes a vacation or they get pulled into firefighting a severe issue? In a large company, you have to assume at least a 20 or 30% buffer because things happen all the time. People switch teams, they take vacation, they get pulled into a higher priority project. And so it's always better to have fewer things to work on rather than a lot of things that you have more opportunity for things to go wrong. Next is all the work around sharing updates with stakeholders and asking for feedback. Doing the actual work for each project is only one part of the job. You also have to spend meaningful time keeping people up to date. Finally, if you're relying on other teams for infrastructure or support, you'll need to be involved in those teams in a regular way and maybe even attend their meetings to ensure progress is being made. Especially as you become more senior, a lot more of your time is going to be spent 
on making sure that different teams and different people are collaborating effectively. And so that means that you really wanna focus on a few things to make sure that those collaborations aren't languishing. I do think having two projects to work on is a good idea. Maybe one major project, which is where most of your time goes, and one minor project, which has less of an urgency around it. But that way, if one project gets blocked, you have something to fall back on that still allows you to have impact and be productive. But trying to juggle more than three projects will almost certainly lead to missed deadlines and unfinished work. Finally, the number one lie that software engineers tell themselves is to say, I'll just push this code to production real quick. It should be safe. I don't need as much review or testing on it. There's so much audacity here to assume that things won't go wrong. And if you haven't figured it out already, the whole theme of this video is Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. In the worst case, if you YOLO your code and push it without it getting reviewed or tested properly, you're gonna find out a little while later from users who are complaining about things not working. And that's not fun. The other outcome here is that your company has land blocking or integration tests, which will identify your commit as a bad commit and then automatically revert it. And that at least saves production users from pain, but it's certainly not a good look for you. There are scenarios where you have to move really quickly and push out an emergency fix. But at a bare minimum, there should be a lot of observability in these cases. When your code gets deployed, how can you make sure it's having the desired effect? And what dashboards are you looking at to make sure that no other parts of your platform are actually going down as a result of your untested change? Software engineering as a field is still relatively new. And that means that as an industry, we're still trying to figure out how do we properly assess and evaluate work? How do we actually get things done productively? And because of how new everything is, as engineers, we often will tell ourselves certain things that almost certainly aren't true. So let me know in the comments, are you guilty of any of these five lies that we've talked about? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.